Hi everyone, I'm Deepak, founder of PMCurve.com and author of the book Tech Simplified for PMs and Entrepreneurs. In this video, we're going to talk about supervised models in AIML. This video is a part of a series of videos uh, aimed to simplify tech for PMs and founders. So let's start. So when it comes to learning AI ML, uh, I would say it's different for PMs as compared to data scientists. And I've seen PMs going to advice for uh, how to learn data science to data scientists. The key thing that you need to realize is uh, a data scientist has very different set of goals and value additions when it comes to these data science projects. A PM has very different set of value additions, right? And which is why the approach to learn AI ML for PMs or founders who manage these AI products is and should be very different than uh, the approach that data scientists take. So uh, then the question becomes, how should PMs learn AI or ML? Uh, the, the first thing is understanding different types of models and how they work, right? Once you understand the different types of models and how they work, you can then understand what are the real life applications of a particular model. The reason it's important is uh, because as a PM or a founder, you need to look at a real life problem and then figure out what sort of models can be suitable for it. Or even before that, you need to think around whether this real life problem can be solved using data science or not. That is going to be the most important thing that you do as a PM or a founder. Now, the third thing after looking at real life applications of the concepts that you mastered is also understanding what is your role going to be in these ongoing AI or ML projects, right? And uh, in different models, as you will see in this series of videos around data science, PMs play different roles. Now, I don't mean to say that these roles are totally different depending on the model. That said, uh, there is some difference that you can see when it comes to building one set of models versus other set of models. And the last thing is, uh, you'd also require some further reading when you are managing these products to go deeper into one area, depending on the problem that you're solving. But we'll also be covering that. So we'll try to sort of cover all of this so that uh, I can take you from place A to place B when it comes to uh, data science products. Now, I've been using this term model pretty frequently. Uh, so let's first figure out what this model is. Now algorithms, uh, we first need to go into algorithms. Uh, so the algorithm is a set of rules that a computer follows to solve a problem, right? So if I asked you, uh, is 20 a even number? You will just think in your head and you'll be like, uh, 20 divided by two is 10, so there is no remainder, right? So because the remainder is zero, it's an even number. The algorithm in your brain is similar to the algorithm that computer also follows. For example, it asks you for a number, you enter this number 20. Now it says that if I divide it by two, what is the remainder? If the remainder is equal to zero, if the answer to that is yes, then the computer will print it is an even number. If the answer is no, suppose I gave 21, the 21 uh, divided by two, the remainder is one, which is not equal to zero, then it will print odd and then it will stop the operation. So an algorithm is a set of rules that computer follows to solve a particular problem. In the case that we shared, it is trying to solve uh, the problem of knowing whether a given number is a even number or odd number. Now, models are, you, you can think of like you take an algorithm and then you create a model on top of that, right? So the machine learning process when it comes to building these models looks like you have a set of training data. We'll talk about like what training data is. Then you have an algorithm and uh, you feed this training data to this algorithm, a particular way of solving a particular problem, right? That's what algorithm is. In this case, that particular problem is data science problem. And then this algorithm will get modified based on training data, which is the process we call learning. The model is learning. And then we have a trained model. And uh, this trained model, we then test it out in like some more data that the model has not been trained on and see whether it can actually derive the right outputs. Let me take an example uh, to explain this better. So think of it like, uh, suppose uh, you sort of created a lot of images of males and females and uh, in a folder, and then you tagged it with male or female, right? So this becomes your training data. Now the algorithm, this machine learning algorithm, will take that data, it will look at an image and it will look at like whether it's tagged male or female. 
and it will learn what the particular features of males are, what particular features of females are. And now you have the trained model. You can snap a photo of a friend and then test it out on this model by feeding that photo. You are asking the model, okay, is this photo of a male or a female, right? So then you get the results. So this is the entire machine learning process. It's very important to understand like different parts of the process uh, so that like you can map it out in your mind when we talk about the next set of things, right? But we'll keep coming back to this image, so don't don't worry. Uh, so let's, let's start with uh, like the types of machine learning models that we see usually. So in general, like there are three types of models that are pretty popular nowadays. One is like supervised model. So supervised, we'll talk in detail in this video. Uh, then there is unsupervised and self-learning. So let's, rather than getting into the definitions of these, let's get into like the supervised models in detail. And then later when we cover in the future videos unsupervised and self-learning, I can actually talk in detail on what they are and actually explain in simple language what they are rather than giving you a plain vanilla definition here, right? So let's focus on supervised models. So let's focus on supervised models. So supervised model is where you have, just like the example we gave of like photos tagged with male or female. Here, like these are photos of apples and oranges, right? Uh, so the first one is a photo of an apple. The second one is of an orange. Then there is a third image, fourth image, fifth image. Now, as you will see, the image of apple uh, at first place and fourth place is different, right? It's not the same image. Image of orange is also different in second, third, and uh, fifth place, right? And this is what we call a labeled data set, right? This is what we call a training data set because we have labeled the images with the keywords uh, like apples and oranges, right? Now this labeled data set, which, has, which contains images and labels, goes into the training. And when we say it goes into training, what we mean is basically in this image, there is an algorithm which data scientist has decided and then this label data or training data is fed into this algorithm and the algorithm is learning and finally we get a trained model, right? So it goes into training and uh, then you have a model ready. Now in this ready model, you get some test data, right? So there is training data, then there is test data. Now, as you see, the image of this apple is nowhere, nowhere it's similar, but nowhere same as the training data that we provided, right? And same for this orange, the image of this orange is not same as any of the images that we have provided. So it's very, very important that we do that so that uh, the model does not looks into one of the training data sets on which it has been trained and just spits that out, right? So that, that is basically you take the test data and then you predict as apple or orange, right? If it predicts apple as apple and orange is orange, it's a good, uh, I would say it's a good outcome. If it reverses the outcome, that means that you have gotten a bad model, right? Uh, so that is basically a good model versus bad model lies in data science. Now, now that we have understood how supervised learning works, which is basically you give set of label data or training data to uh, the model, the model sort of learns, and then the model is used to, uh, basically we test some, we take some testing data and then we feed it to model and see the output. That's how we gauge whether we have got a good supervised model versus a bad supervised model. Now, where does the rule of PM comes in? Because that's that's an important thing to ask after you've learned the basics of supervised uh, model. So when it comes to training data, I think uh, PM's role is very, very important because the quality of training data will determine the effectiveness of the model, right? And we'll take more examples to sort of show you that. So the quality of training data determines the effectiveness of the model. And PMs can play a good role here because PMs can intuitively or even like in a particular domain, uh, PMs know the holistic set of things that affect a particular decision or a particular problem, right? And uh, PMs can use that knowledge to say that, okay, these are the factors which are going to affect this particular problem or this particular uh, output, right? So which is where PMs can play a huge role in identifying how should the training data look. Right, so that's very important part of PM's job where they work with data scientists to figure out this training data. Now, the algorithm learning and trained model, I think that should be left to data scientists. You don't need to worry too much there because data scientists are good at taking different algorithms, uh, sort of using training data on those algorithms and finally spitting out a good model and then testing out that model and 
seeing which which of the algorithms are actually good right so this is what should be left to data scientist as pm the only thing as we discussed in the beginning was the only thing you need to care about is you should know enough about these algorithm so that when you look at a problem you can gauge whether this is solvable by a particular algorithm or not right uh, you don't need to be very very accurate around that assessment but you should have a broad sense check on whether something is solvable or not solvable right and which is why you need to learn a little bit about how these algorithms work what their limitations are and what sort of training data is required to train these algorithm so that, that is like leave this to data scientists the third is the results now this is where pms can also play a very crucial role i think the first thing that they can do is can you uh, understand can you define how effective is this model right so data scientists have like certain parameters that they use to gauge effectiveness of a model like accuracy precision recall we'll talk about these terms uh, later but pms know how to holistically assess whether a model will be good for the business or the problem or not and how do they do that they, they can set they can look at some benchmarks they can look at like some of the critical errors that the model is making in the test data and say that okay with these critical errors we are not willing to let this go out as a very simple example we saw that large language models were hallucinating right and at certain times they were saying certain things which were not politically correct or that were not uh, good uh, i would say right in in the like common sensical definition of good and uh, that is where like companies like opinai invested a lot in fine tuning these models so that the critical errors that large language models were doing or chat gpt was doing does not actually uh, gets contained does not come across to users so that is basically a pm's job which is assessing the risks uh, and then finally saying that okay this actually passes the filter of those risks and you can now sort of use this model we can deploy this model into production and ship it to users right so step the first step and the last step is where pms play a big role and i would also say that these two are possibly the most important uh, and most subjective areas of a data science product right so let's take the problem of identifying who is most at risk from covid-19 what we want to assess is like who are the people who can get severely impacted by covid which could mean that they are hospitalized or in some cases like it's a matter of life or death right uh now the training data if you look at the training data to map the risk for an individual from covid-19 we need historical data around age pre-existing respiratory conditions and few more information that can be mapped to how critical or how severe covid affected these people right so uh, this data can come from hospitals this data can come from governments uh, but this data will create the training set all right now a pm can also think about because we said that pm plays an important role in uh, sort of training data pm can also think of other factors that affect the output here for example do weather conditions affect uh, how the risk changes for individuals uh, does any other illness affect how the risk change for an individual or even like uh, the frequency of like frequency of interactions with other individuals also affect the risk for people because the amount of exposure can be high or low depending on how much time they spent with another individual who had contracted covid so pms can think about like some additional factors other factors and they can bring those into picture so even if these factors are not captured right now what can happen is when you are trying to build this model you can give this feedback to these hospitals and others who can start capturing that sort of data and the model can be refined on that data all right so now we have talked about the training data let's talk about algorithms a little bit and supervised algorithms in this case so the supervised algorithms are of two kind uh, primarily the first is a classification algorithm so for example your gmail classifying your emails into spam or no spam is a classification supervised algorithm gmail has given uh, data of this is a spam e spam email this is a non spam email to a machine learning algorithm and then the model that came out of it can actually now detect whether something is spam or not spam right so it's a pure like classification model the second is basically the regression uh, sort of supervised models now regression as the name suggests it's it's basically the output that you are trying to get out of classification was 
a particular bucket or a particular category. In regression, it's more of a continuous number. For example, housing prices. So if you want to predict what could be the price of houses in a particular location in next 10 years, you can use past data as training data and then you can say that, okay, this is how I'm projecting the prices are. But the output of this model is not a bucket. It's more of a number. Like it could be $1 million, $2 million, half a million dollar, 100K dollars and so on and so forth. Right, so housing prices is more of a regression sort of model. So now you understand supervised as basically classification and regression. In both cases, we are giving historical data, which is labeled in some way or other. Now let's take some real life applications because we said that like thinking about a problem and then sort of thinking about some algorithms which can actually solve that problem is one of the primary, uh, I would say duties of a product manager or a founder who is managing these products. So let's look at two cases. One is risk of COVID that we already discussed. And second is weather prediction. So just take a moment and think uh, whether you'll use classification or uh, regression in risk of COVID. And also think whether you'll use classification or regression in weather prediction. Okay. So, uh, as it turns out, risk of COVID can be both a classification and a regression problem. For example, if you're trying to assess risk in terms of number, like between zero to 100, what is that risk or what is the probability that becomes more of a regression uh, thing? Because you will say that, okay, there is a 98% risk or 95% risk or 70% risk of COVID for this particular individual. So that becomes a classification, uh, regression sort of uh, supervised learning. But if you say that risk is high or low or medium, just three buckets, then it could become a classification uh, sort of algorithm. So risk of COVID could be both classification and regression. Weather prediction is more of a regression because what you're trying to predict is based on past data, what is the temperature, what is the wind uh, velocity, what is the humidity that is going to be today. Now in the next video, we are going to discuss like how to sort of test out these supervised models, like both classification and regression and then how to measure efficacy of these supervised models. We will also go deeper into the classification and regression algorithms because there are algorithms like linear regression, there is logistic regression, then there is uh, SVM, support vector machines and all that. So there, there could be a future video where we go deeper into this. Uh, but yeah, for these reasons, uh, subscribe to this channel and I hope you found this video useful. Please feel free to post any question you have in the comment section. Thank you very much and have a good day.